Hi, New Life family and friends. Chris Williams again here and uh, co-host of New Life Live, marriage and family therapist, consultant, entrepreneur, and uh, but most importantly here today is just sharing some really critical information in this series around spiritual abuse and its recovery about spiritual health. And there are many, many different signs of spiritual health. But if people recover from spiritual abuse, here's what I see in these individuals as signs of the restoration of a real healthy spiritual connection to God, a real healthy faith, and and, and a life of security in Christ moving forward. One thing that spiritually healthy people do is they really do take radical ownership of their own internal condition, of their soul and their soul care. doesn't mean that they're on a solo track there. It just means that they know that they are the gatekeepers of that responsibility. They're not waiting around for other people to rescue them. They're not waiting for other people to kind of do the hard work for them. They say, no, I got to get into the hard work and take responsibility for the condition of my own heart, for the condition of my own soul and mind. And, And so that's number one. I just see that people have that radical ownership. Number two, spiritually healthy people live life in transparency and vulnerability to trusted others, that they have a network of people or a close group of people that they, that, that really know them, know them in an intimate and deep level, know what their sin patterns are, know what their gifting is. um, And again, at the end of the day, knows the condition of their internal world and can really, again, encourage and guide um, and even at times correct them. Uh, Spiritually healthy people, also number three, they're engaged, they're continually engaged in a spiritual growth process. It may look like for for mine, it looks different over time. But what I typically need is some other resource in my life that is helping guide my process and speaking into that. And so whether that be um, a, a, a journal process, a devotional process, something in there, you know, books, uh, videos, whatever it may be, our church had, churches have great programs in that, but, um, but that we are not neglecting the care of our own soul and the nourishment of our own soul, so we're engaged in a spiritual growth process. Number four, a, a spiritually healthy person is engaged in rhythms of rest and recreation, is that a spiritually healthy person doesn't have to strive and work and um, constantly be busy. Uh, That's usually a sign of a soul ailment, a soul sickness. And so spiritually healthy people know how to rest well, know how to have fun, know how to really engage in things that rejuvenate their energy, and, and their joy. Number five is that spiritually healthy people are continually rooting their primary identity, not in what they do, but in the love of God, in who they are in Christ. And so as uh, I call it my daily conversion, you know, d- daily and sometimes successful more than others, sometimes not so successful, but trying to find my identity and not who I know or who knows me or what I do or what I don't do or what do I accomplish or not accomplish, but ultimately my identity is a beloved child of God. And then number six is that spiritually healthy people have a growing humble confidence. And, and humble confidence looks like this, is that a person is really open and aware of all of their both strengths and weaknesses, their gifts and their liabilities, their Christ-likeness, and their sin. The humble just means, man, I'm here for it all. I'm awake to it all. I want to recognize it all. The confidence comes in in the fact that our weaknesses, our liabilities, and our sins don't define us, nor will they determine us. That we have a process that I have confidence in Christ. I have confidence in His work. I have confidence in the midst of me being this really kind of broken, 
uh, guy that can have some good things on one hand and have some really awful things on the other. But ultimately, the confidence is these things don't define me. These awful things aren't, again, determining me. But there is something else moving me forward. It is a confidence, a radical confidence in the grace of God that as we're working on these things, we're moving forward on solid, firm grounding. So those are six signs of spiritual health. They are not meant, again, as all or nothings. We're never going to encompass all of them perfectly. We're going to be somewhere on a spectrum there, but we just want to be moving in the direction of these six key components. So thanks for being with me today for learning more about what spiritual health looks like. If you're struggling, if, if you know, man, this seems so far off from my experience, New Life is here to help you. Give us a call, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We can connect you with the resources you need to figure out what is in the way of your spiritual vitality in Christ and what do you need to move the needle further in the direction of Christ's will um, for health in your life. Thanks for being with me today and can't wait to see you again.